TDD stands for Test Driven Development. For those of you who have been writing your code first and then the unit tests, don't do it. <laughs> or do TDD whenever possible or wherever possible, make it a habit. It has a lot of advantages. Once you start realizing those advantages, you will love doing TDD. TDD is one of the extreme programming principles where it asks you to write tests first and then drive your code from it. So the question is, how do you write your tests even without the application or the code out there? You write your tests from the requirements. That's how the quality analysts or the testing team usually does it, does it isn't it? So they write their test cases from the requirements. Then when the feature or application is ready, they're going to test that particular feature against the test cases to make sure it meets, meets the requirements. TDD has the very same advantage. You will drive your application code from the requirements. So you take up an acceptance criteria if you are in the agile world, take up a story, the acceptance criteria, which is nothing but a requirement. And then you will write your test unit tests first. And from that, you will start generating or driving your code using the beautiful IDEs like Eclipse NetBeans out there. Along with staying close to the requirements, it has several other advantages. The maintenance of your application becomes very easy once you do TDD because if you are making any new changes, once your application is out in production, you are making some new changes or you are fixing a defect, you can run your tests and you can add your make your changes, make sure you do it using TDD and then run the tests again, everything will be green, you are good to go. It will be a very clean API. So the new methods and uh, functions you will be writing, the class you will be writing, it will be cleaner because when you do TDD, you are not worried about the implementation when you start writing it, you develop the contract first. You will write the methods first and then you will worry about the implementation. Those co That contract will stay close to the requirements and very easy and cleaner to use. And it will have all the unit tests advantage since TDD is a way of doing unit tests. Generally, as you keep writing a lot and lot of unit tests, it will become a regression suit and if someone makes a tiny little change you can know if something breaks right then and there if you make these unit tests a part of your build. These unit tests as you do TDD become a document a documentation. It will help a new developers coming on the team or some other developer who is new to the component easily understand what a particular class is doing by looking at the unit tests. Last but not the least, refactoring and extending, as I already said, if you find a piece of code that can be improvised and refactored, you can run the test, make sure all the tests are passing, then do the TDD drive, you are refactoring through TDD, which is very helpful uh, in making things correct. So when you are pairing in using the extreme programming, one of the extreme programming principles, TDD is a lot more fun. As you write sophisticated classes, it might look complex to start with but as you get used to it it's a lot more fun and also a lot, a lot more advantageous to write clean and neat code and with less bugs so when we do tdd and when our feature gets to the testing phase since we are driving it from the requirements our feature will close stay close to the requirements and stay close to what the quality analyst team or the testing team is expecting so I will leave you with a tiny little pseudo code here. I will do the hands on next where you will see all this in action. But when you do TDD, we'll create a unit test class first, even before we create the actual class. So here I want to have a class that does something, a class called A. So at this point, when I'm writing my unit tests in my application, I don't even have this class. Simply I'll come and start typing A, A is equal to new A as if that class exists. At this point, my test will not even compile. So I'll ask the IDE, Eclipse or NetBeans to right click on it or click on the error message and then say create this class. Eclipse will give me an op give me options to create class etc. So create that class. The IDE will create the class. Then I'm going to say a dot do something. This method doesn't even exist in this class at this point. So I'll create a method with whatever contract I want. I'm going to pass two numbers to this method, two strings based on the requirement. Again, Eclipse will complain, I can't find this method. So I'm going to ask Eclipse, click on the error message, please go ahead and create the method for me. So that's where I'm creating the contract from the requirements. Now, I'm going to use all the assert statements which you typically do in the unit test. And if I say this method should return me a number or a string, since I don't even have a body for this method, I didn't implement that method. If I do an assert and run my test, the test will first fail. So make your test fail first, 
write your implementation, come back, run that test, it should pass. That's pretty much TDD. So see it in action in the next hands-on presentation.